This morning we, we made a little fire. It's, it's our first place. It's our first um, place where we go for learning. It's, um, you know, a lot of people will go to their counselors or go to their priests or their attorneys. Um, we go to our fires. It's something that we've always done. So the things that matter to us are, are always, always done by a fire. And so this morning, I, um, uh, one of my younger family was out here. He helped me build that fire this morning. And uh, you know, one of the things he started to do is throw wood on the fire, as you're supposed to do. But he just threw them any random way. And I, I told him, I said, hey, uh, Chunchke, you, you, you might want to make sure that when you put these in, you make sure the branches are pointing up. Oh yeah, he said. Yeah, so, yeah you know, just I don't want you to get yelled at by somebody, you know. But make sure that they're. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and you know, I I also had to tell him to not blow on the fire. Uh, those are some of those things that you you kind of you, you get told, and and um, that's all you really need to do. I can assure you that after today, that young man will never put a log in upside down or blow on a fire. Um, so whether or not that was a beautiful moment for someone, for me, once again, it's our Ho-Chunk Woshka that we were blessed with. It's our way of life that was passed down for thousands and thousands of years that has stood the test of time. And you know, that got passed down today. It seemed relatively small, but I guess it's gonna mean something later on. My name is Clayton Winishek. I'm the traditional tribal chief of the Ho-Chunk Nation. Prior to me being the chief I had in the non-Ho-Chunk way of life, my uncle was the chief when he passed in the mid-70s, late 70s, my father became chief, Chief Ben Winishek. After his passing, once he left us, it was very, it was very hard for me to continue on without him. The things that he taught me, I tried to recall what they were. He poured tobacco, talked to our creator, and asked for good things for the nation, for the people. He always had them in his, in his prayers. He wanted the good for everybody. I try to live by that to this day. Every now and then, our, our tribal government, I feel I have to step up and say something because of the people, for the people. Not everything they do is uh, in our Ho-Chunk ways. But we have to re recall remember who we are, where we came from, what got us this far in, in, this, in this world. You know, we were nobody back in the day. A while back, there was a policy to remove Indians to the west side of the Mississippi River. Uh, Ho-Chunks were no different than anyone else, and we had but the difference was, was in the Midwest, in the state of you know, what is now Wisconsin, um, Wisconsin hosted beautiful forested lands, um, farmlands, rich, palpable soil for farming and fishing, and it became a desired property. So a lot of the, the pressure for 
the Aboriginal peoples was to um, uh, remove them from a specific property, either farm or create their homesteads there, and then not have to deal with um, any of the Ho-Chunk people that were there. The federal government came to the Ho-Chunk people, rounded them up, and put them on, put them in boxcars. These removals were quite macabre. They happened at, um, during some of the most inclement weather that our uh, state now could, could host. And a lot of people during the transport perished along the way. But nonetheless, because of this land being so rich for the Ho-Chunk people, they always migrated back. Eventually, the government knew that they weren't getting rid of the Ho-Chunk. And they also knew that the Ho-Chunk were warriors. We are a warrior society. Uh, there's no really nice part to describe that history of what a people would do to survive. But uh, we depended on our, our warriors, our veterans, our, our um, men of service, and we built our way of life around that. You know, this, this area, we not only evolved to survive as Ho-Chunk people in this status, but we've also learned to survive and evolve as a government. Starting in 1962, there was, um, the Bureau of Indian Affairs came down. With the help of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, this, this constitution was written. We became a federally recognized tribe. They formed what they called the Wisconsin Winnebago Business Committee. At that time, we had very little. All of our programs that we had were federally funded. They were grants from the government that, that kept us going. As time went on, moving forward to the late 80s, uh, we started uh, trying to venture out in different businesses, and one of them was uh, a smoke shop. They sold cigarettes out of a mobile home. And it worked. And later on, down the road, they built the first bingo hall down in Wisconsin Dells, which is now known as the Ho-Chunk Casino. One of the things that I think about is, in 1989, when we started these smoke shops, the bingo halls, later on the casinos, our tribal government rewrote our constitution a lot of the things that we did, what we tried to do as a nation, everything involved the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Rewriting the Constitution took a lot of that out. So it went from Wisconsin Winnebago Business Committee to Ho-Chunk Nation, who we really are. When they did that, a lot has changed from our housing to our health, education, the workforce, our language. All of this stuff has changed because of the gaming re revenue that we acquired over the years. Without that, we, um, we would still be living off the grants from the government. When you, when you help the nation, when you are a part of this step forward, uh, there's no one in that building over here that, that's getting rich. Your work might mean that a six-year-old gets some bridge work done on his teeth that is needed, or gets a hearing aid in um, so that he can learn or she can learn. You know, it, it could mean anything that someone gets a handicapped vehicle, someone uh, gets their first semester grant for tuition to go forward, you know, so that they can come back and help. You see the progress of, of where they are from where they've been, and you get to kind of project where they're going, and you get to be a part of that, you know, you're in the best ride of, the, of your life. You've taken a civilization that is statistically at the bottom of every health, every education, every professional, everywhere, and you have advanced them beyond that. You get to be a part of that.
Currently, Milwaukee Museum is going to be um, undergoing a move of the entire museum. It's a $330 million project, and they're going to be moving it. And the a and &E engineers brought back the conceptuals, and there are totem poles in the front of a Wisconsin-based uh, museum drafting. So there are people thousands of miles away that have no idea that the totem culture is not part of the Midwest. You know, and so for those who decide that, you know, I need to learn a little bit more about the people and recognize for the fact that they're not the same as the other 567 federally recognized tribe, that they have their own culture, they have their own story, their own way of life, and their own future is, you know, for us back here is an honor. Going to some of the grand openings, the one in the Dells was really impressive what they did with the Dells. The architectural work that was done, it was, it was something. The coloring that they used outside and what it represents and the inside was very nice. It, it has to have meaning or you're going to be drawing totem poles for someone's work and saying, hey, it fits the bill. This whole chunk is who we are. We're people of a sacred voice. Back in the days of war, when tribes were fighting amongst themselves, a lot of these tribes came to us for help because of the whole chunk. You you um, think of that whole chunk, in the English version of it, is a sacred language, sacred tongue, you might say. So, a lot of these other tribes came to us because of the power that we had for speaking to our creator and asking for different things, um, a good life, a good harvest, however you wanted to look at it. So for the years to come, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we can, we can improve ourselves even more with our housing, our education, our labor force, treating our elders, I always tell my family, you know, we don't do these things just to be doing something. There's meaning behind it. A lot of the things that my father, the other elders, the customs, tra traditions, our doings, you know, it's, it's got meaning behind it. And to think about that on this day now is that we're continuing on with that. We've gained a lot through our casinos, the profits that are brought in. You know, we, we can do a lot more that we can continue on and, and prosper. And each Ho-Chunk living now and years to come that they have a good life we could give them a good life for the things that we do, that we did in, in these years now to look forward. And that every Ho-Chunk out there has something to look forward to.